Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we will discuss the first set, first category of examples that uh, we will be encountering, and that's called the transportation problem. So we will like to be uh, proficient with identifying this category of problems so that we can immediately code the template solution and therefore spend uh, more time on tailoring, customizing this uh, template uh, towards our actual specific problem. All right. So again, a reminder, the focus is more to pattern recognize this category of problems and then to apply the solution very quickly. Okay, it is not our aim to redo, rethink, and remodel the whole situation again because we are able to uh, pattern recognize this category of business problems. So what is this transportation about and what are the characteristics? Uh, this transportation problem is very commonly seen because it is about moving uh, items from one side to another, transportation, right, moving. Um, and in business, we have a lot of logistics and movements and we move goods, we move raw materials, we move people, we move passengers. So definitely a very commonly encountered problem. But we're going to look at the more abstract generalized model rather than a specific uh, kind of objects. Okay, so uh, transportation problem is kind of characterized by having M origins. Well, the origins will be like factories, uh, delivering goods to warehouses. So we have M factories, M origins, and N destinations. Destinations will be the site or the locality or the entity that receives right, those um, delivered goods. So M factories, for example, N warehouses, or it could be M warehouses and N uh, retail shops, or it could be M retail shops and N uh, customers at their homes, right? All the more so with COVID-19 and uh, uh, stay home, safe distancing measures these days, uh, we have a lot more of these logistics transportation problems. So M origins, N destinations. And one of the characteristics is that we only have one kind of uh, goods to be transported from source to destination. All right, only one kind. Uh, in logistical terms, it might be called the SKU, the stop keeping units. One code for this kind of uh, goods. For example, uh, sardines that have high cylindrical packaging, can packaging, uh, will be given one SKU, but sardines with a flat oval packaging will have another SKU, even though they're all sardines, all canned sardines. Uh, more because the demand pattern for each SKU will be different. People preferring uh, you know, the, the cylindrical forms, the small cylindrical forms might want it because they need it for portability, for picnics and all that, and not necessarily for stack up storage like the flat packaging might offer. So SKU, and we're talking about one SKU in transportation problem. All right, why is that so? Well, in a way, it's a simplification of the complexity Right, so most of the time we will transport a lot more than just one kind of things, uh, but uh, in this case, let's begin with the basics. So one kind of goods, and the only thing that the customers on the receiving end need to specify or worry about will be the quantity. Yeah, okay, so all these will be to ensure that we only worry about the quantities on the destination side. So there will be uh, also, unit cost, variable unit costs, all right, uh, the more quantity being the transported, the higher the overall amount of transportation cost. So each unit cost or each variable cost from source I to destination J will be uh, measured and recorded as CIJ. So all these constants need to be known. Yeah, okay. Next is uh, what, what this, this model doesn't capture will be other costs. For example, we cannot have um, bulk transfer discount yeah, because although that is very dominant, uh, frequently encountered in daily lives, discount will change the constant CIJ when the quantity goes up or down, making 
CIG non-linear, right, with respect to the quantity transferred. So we cannot have that. The model is a little bit um, unable to adapt to that. Next is fixed cost. The model also cannot deal with fixed cost. We are, will have to uh, simulate it somehow by, by amortizing the fixed cost across some estimated number of goods, which by and large might be wrong because the optimal quantity may not be the same. So we have to approximate somehow. So these are the limitations that we try to accommodate. But otherwise, in this model, the variable cost, right? Uh, you, you, you send one sardine can from factory one to warehouse one, is one dollar and ten sardine cans will be ten dollars so you'll be just multiplying by the quantity now we look at a network representation because as a diagram it clearly uh, brings out all the structural right the, the logical structural uh, relationships and to show us that even though this is factory to warehouse and not retail shop to customers home the network representation of both problems will be similar will be similar right so if we have two factories then the two factories will have their capacity all right so uh, we can just give some numbers uh, for example the capacities of factory one can be five thousand uh, now let's say one thousand and for factory two similarly one thousand okay we can also have customers, any number of customers, uh, each customer being characterized by its demand for the single SKU that is being transported. So uh, customer one could want 200 cans, customer two, 300 cans, and customer three, uh, let's just say 400 cans. So these are known in advance and they are fixed throughout the transportation uh, execution so that the numbers don't change and vary. So some of these assumptions, they are like, um, yeah, pretty assumed, right? We, we don't really question, but they, they, they need to be uh, held true for the linear programming model to work. Okay, so uh, we have all these constants, the capacity of the factories, right? The demand quantities wanted by the, the customers and also the costs involved, right? So we have all the CIJs all determined. And they need not be the same, obviously, because uh, you can have factory one, right? Shipping to customer one. Maybe factory one is closer to city or the C1 something. They are all rather on the high side. Uh, and factory two might be in the rural areas and the C2 something might be on the lower side. So it all depends. Now, uh, we have predetermined all these six numbers, the CIJs. And what are we supposed to determine? Remember LP, LP is an optimization question. So we need to ask how many, right? Uh, how many cans of sardines should we deliver from factory one to customer one? Imagine you are the supervisor making up this schedule, dispatching driver, loading up the quantity of sardine cans to fulfill the uh, orders, sent in overnight right so how are you going to schedule in such a way as to minimize the overall cost for the company for your department and the idea is this so you wonder how many so anytime we have a how many remember we will stick in a decision variable to say hmm i wonder how many quantities how many sardine cans do i deliver from factory one to customer one very specific Okay, how many? I don't know. I call it X11. And how many from uh, factory 1 to customer 2 and so on? And also, of course, how many to go from factory 2 to customer 1 to customer 2, 3, 4, and uh, well, 2 and 3. So altogether, we have six unknowns, six quantity unknowns. And they are also, by the way, because of loading up the truck and all that, integer uh, yeah and even for very uh, uncountable things like sugar and rice normal logistics supply chain will demand that we deliver in packets or boxes and so it is still a discrete number of things that we send out so by and large such a problem will typically require the decision variables to be integer now um, so we have our 
question set, we, we have our um, unknown quantities defined, and it leaves us with calculating the overall costs, right? So if sending one can from factory one to customer one takes C11, let's say it's $10, then sending, no, it can't be, $1 per can, uh, then two sending two cans, if X11 were to be two, then we will have two times one, $2, right? And if X11 were to be 100, then you'll be 100 times one, $100. But that's not the only cost. We also have C12 times X12, C13 times X13, and so we just basically sum up the CIJ times XIJ. Very simple. So we just do a pairwise sum product of the C and the X, and we have the total cost to implement this shipment. So we need to be told, because even if X11 were to be zero, and if that is part of the optimal solution, that is also very good information because we would not dispatch any driver to go from factory one to customer one. So we need to know whether it is zero or some magical number that will help overall uh, satisfaction of all customers demanded quantities at the same time reduce our overall cost. Now, uh, in addition, we also have, uh, for example, some constraints to think about other than the fact that the decision variables have to be non-negative and also integer because for example suppose c11 is one cent like really really cheap right so relative to others very cheap in that case wouldn't it be a natural conclusion that we say well why don't we dispatch all right sardine cans from factory one to d1 d2 and d3 yeah because overall we add up 900 and factory one can basically satisfy all these. Uh, that is true by observation, but we don't want to become a solver ourselves. What happens if we have a little bit of a challenge like this? So we now know that um, uh, here on the right side, the total demand quantity is 1,200. On the left side, we know factory one cannot send out more than 1,000 cans. Of course, this has to be done in a limited period of time, uh, let's say one day or one week or you know one month. So a very defined, clearly defined uh, uh, spread of time. So within this time, we know factory one cannot send more than 1,000 cans. So if we don't have constraints, then basically we will just be saying, keep sending from factory one, C11, C12, C13, and uh, whoops, in reality, we cannot fulfill because we only have 1,000 cans and total customer demand is 1,200 cans.